We, 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 and we. What a race. I loved it. I loved it. I was sitting on my sofa back home, watching with the kids, and I was like, who is going to win? Who is going to win? I said, I don't know. Who knows? It was absolutely incredible. I love that race. That was exciting. Uh, that was awesome. That's just one we want to see in Formula 1. Max and Charles for 2022? Yes, Max and Charles. I'm hoping Mercedes can, can come into the game with either George or Lewis. But what a race. I loved it. A lot of overtaking. Thanks to the new rules in 2022, they can follow each other. Two very different setup between Red Bull and Ferrari. Ferrari is super fast in the sector one with a lot of downforce, but fairly slow on a straight line. Red Bull on the opposite, very fast on a straight line, which is great if you don't wear out the tire with that top speed, meaning that, you know, you can overtake. Once you overtake, you're hard to overtake, which was the case for Max. And they both drove brilliantly. They tried to play every trick, you know, on the last corner, the DRS, the second DRS, uh, or third DRS zone, into the last corner, trying not to get in front of the other so you wouldn't get it uh, on the second zone. It felt like it was Bahrain all over again, but even better. I absolutely love that race. I love that battle. I think we're going to have more of those cars are very close to each other. Leclerc first and Sogon, what a start of the season. Verstappen coming back from that disappointment in Bahrain to win the race on those last few laps. That was, that was brilliant. I loved it. absolutely loved it. I want to see so much more of those. Lap 37, what happened? Lap 37, Ricardo, Alonso and Bottas. Three cars retiring in one lap. I mean, we saw Fernando Alonso stay will say cool the car, so probably overheating issue there. It was out there and doing such a good race. Daniel Ricciardo completely losing the drive at the last corner. Also no, no kind of warning. And Bottas, we just saw him in the pit lane and we didn't have any information. And he was doing such a great race. Uh, to be fair, Alonso and Bottas really deserved to be at the end. Ricciardo as well, wasn't, wasn't bad. You know, he was up there with no Norris that eventually finished in the point. So what happened in, turn in, in lap 37? I don't know, but that was definitely something for the race. And that allows me to jump on the next point. Lewis, Lewis, what a, what a terrible qualifying. I mean, we haven't seen Lewis that far for a very long time. And he was on genuine pace. It was not like, you know, he had a yellow flag or he didn't do a lap. It was drying. It was just slow. But in the race, on the hard tires, his car came back to life and he was up there. It was up there, it was doing great lap time, great overtaking. You could still see that he was finding a rear end, especially out of the last corner. The car would always be snappy and throttle, but it was it was there. The first safety car from Ladifi doesn't help Magnussen and Lewis Hamilton because they're starting out hard, they want to go long, and then at the end, pit stop for medium. But because of that safety car, everyone that started on medium could put new hard tires, and that didn't make their life easy. But still, they were up there at the restart. I thought they were going to lose a lot of position, and they did not, and they were surviving, and they were there, they were fast and it was great to see and then the last safety car virtual safety car Lewis couldn't pit Kevin did luckily for him Lewis couldn't pit and instead of exiting the pit lane in sixth or seventh position he just couldn't pit so he had to wait the pit lane was open again after the virtual safety car ended and lost the time what you have to know is when there is a safety car and you're on track your speed is down from 40 percent so you're driving slow on track but pit entry pit lane and pit exit you can still push like normal race a pit stop in Formula 1 costs roughly 22 seconds average. If there is a safety car or a virtual safety car, same thing, you kind of gain 8 to 10 seconds. So big, big gain there. Uh, Lewis couldn't use that. So he was, you know, 12 and then had to push and make his way back and, and try to score points. 10s, I mean, clearly not what he wanted, but I felt like he came alive in that race after the, the quality and the free practice. And hopefully, Mercedes can step up the game and comes back stronger in two weeks. I'm sure they will, you know, they will push as hard as they can, send parts at the last minute and try to get stronger in Melbourne. Point number four, DRS line. I mean, as a driver, when we had a DRS zone with a braking zone and another DRS zone following it, like it's the case in Abu Dhabi on the two big straight line, I really didn't like it. It's, it's a nightmare. As a telespectator, it was fun. I mean, it was playing games and trying not to be in front at the DRS line before the last corner, but also keeping the momentum. Uh, we saw Charles and Max trying and breaking hard not to hit that line first and, and Max almost, almost spinning out there. It was great. I'm, I'm really hoping that with the new rules maybe and, and fine tuning, we can get away from the DRS. It still feels like it's quite an artificial overtake, but definitely it's gone much better than last year. I enjoy that line. I mean, you know, as much as I wouldn't enjoy it when I was a driver, watching it, it was great. Point number five, Jetta dangerous racetrack i mean i've never driven it so i don't know but i saw the driver's comment obviously we kind of also mick schumacher 
crash in qualifying. We were glad that it's okay, it was, it was a big one. It is a very fast street course, like Baku style, but even even faster. And the thing is that there's a lot of blind corners and that, that's, I guess, the problem. You know, fast is not a problem, but fast and blind, it becomes more dangerous because you rely on martial, you rely on lights, rely on being at the right place. Could they potentially bring spotter like we do on ovals or in NASCAR or in IndyCar? That maybe could be something. But yes, I saw the drivers, some of the drivers complaining and saying it was dangerous. I, I understand it, but it's been only second time in Jeddah and both of those races from 2020 and 2022 were brilliant you know you don't know who's gonna win till the, the checker flag is down so that's something you want to see and that's something you really enjoy you know safety first no question so let's see what can be done to Jeddah but those last two races two years racing 21 22 were brilliant races and maybe with a spot or something like that driver will feel more confident or more comfortable I, sh I should say Checo Perez that hurt I mean Checo normally in qualifying is a little bit slower than, than Max it went on pole, had a great start, led the race, was fast, pitted, and then next lap safety car. That killed him, was forced after that, couldn't really recover from that, couldn't really pass, you know, signs, and I think that, that hit him hard. So, tough one, but I think Checo scoring pole and, and showing that he's capable of going faster than Max in qualifying, that's, that's a big thing for him, and I think he will bounce, bounce back stronger. So, I feel for Checo, but also as I can see that, you know, maybe that was what he needed, and he's gonna be up there in the next, uh, in the next few races. If I have to mark the Grand Prix, that's a 9 out of 10. I was loving it. I was my kids, they were asking me, who's gonna win, who's gonna win? I said, I can't tell you, it's it's too hard. So exactly what we wanna see. In two weeks, we're racing in Melbourne. Melbourne has made some changes to the racetrack so that it's gonna be better racing, uh, those new rules. I think it's gonna just gonna be great. I'm really hoping that Mercedes can come and fight with Ferrari and Red Bull. That'd be awesome to see three cars up there at the front. You know, hard to say who's gonna be good. I can tell you in Melbourne, Max and Charles, are gonna be, they're gonna be going again after each other, but hopefully we can get George and Lewis coming in the, in the fight and giving us a, an even greater show. But for now, 2022, I must say Formula One is, is the way I like it, the way I want it. I'm enjoying watching the races. I hope you, you are enjoying it as well. As always, please make sure you subscribe, you like, you leave a comment. I can answer your questions. I can ask you comment, comments and we can do more videos. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Thank you.